guess what guys in this video we are going to be channeling our inner neckbeard because we are going to be talking about computer logic yes we are going to be owning ourselves with logic because we're going to be talking about if else statements and if else statements are by far the most common and probably the most useful logic computer programming structure in existence and if else statements are pretty intuitive you can just look at an if else statement and pretty much tell for the most part what's going on but let's break it down a little bit let's talk about things in a little bit more depth what's going to happen when you actually execute an if else statement or when you execute your program is your computer is going to go down line by line and once it reaches the if, what it's going to do is it's going to check the contents of this parentheses right here. And if the contents of the parentheses are true, this is going to execute. But if the contents of the if else statement are false, it will not execute. And in computer programming, you could put true directly in the parentheses of an if else statement. This is totally factual. You could totally do this, but this isn't really very real life, quote unquote. What's more than likely going to happen is you'll have something like this. You will have a variable that represents a Boolean and the computer is going to check the variable whether it is true or false. And if it is true or false, depending on whether uh, the actual value is, if it is true, it will execute it. But Let's talk about some other scenarios. Wouldn't it make sense that you could also have a negation or you would have something that will run if the program or if the actual code is not true within the parentheses? And if you guessed that, you would be correct because we have this thing called an else. And if the actual contents of that parentheses up top are not true, it, the total opposite will happen. This will execute down at the bottom. So this is not true or the user is not logged in but we could even go a little bit further than this and if else statements are very composable you don't have to have an else you could just have an if but if you do have an else if let's see here so we can have an else if right here you can also do other checks so is user admin we could also check if the user is an admin and we need to bring this down to so we don't violate convention and something like this would happen uh it would check if the user is an admin we would have some type of code right here probably more complex code like this that would say user is admin and we could also chain another else down at the bottom too so if else statements are very composable and you can have just one if you could have an if else or you could have a varying level of combinations here but also it's important to remember that you can't just have an else if like this if you're going to have an else if you need to have the if and if you're going to have an l just a regular else you can have it without the else if but at the very base there are must always be an if if you're going to have an else or an else if so very important to remember that but we can't just stop there there's also other things that we can add within our parentheses to use almost as a tool to perform more specific checks and probably the most common is going to be this this is a comparison checker sometimes called an equality checker, but whatever you want to call it, it's still kind of the same exact thing. What it's doing is it's going to check for equality. And by far the most common is going to be string equality. And this is kind of a funny example, but one thing that I've always noticed is that if somebody's really into Frederick Nietzsche, they're always fucking crazy so what i did is i made an if statement to check if somebody's favorite author is frederick nietzsche and if the favorite author of the person is frederick nietzsche it will run a quick console line to let me know to quickly leave the room because this person is probably insane and we can do this with numbers as well too we have the alligator symbol if you're familiar if you've taken any type of algebra i'm sure if you're taking a programming course you're at least a little bit familiar with the alligator brackets we can do this with numbers so if two if two is greater than one it will console dot right line the two is greater than one and we can do comparison operators with numbers as well too 
would not recommend doing these types of operators on strings. If you want to operate on strings, you want to use equality. And if you're operating on numbers, you are going to be using the alligator clips. So the next operator is going to be what are called logical operators or sometimes re referred to as logic operators. But either way, logical operators look like this. You have a double ampersand and you have a double pipe. This code right here is kind of confusing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here and kind of explain it visually. And I'm going to give an example of myself. Every single day, I try to run and I try to play golf. If I do both, if I run and I play golf, and this is the ampersand right here. So if I run and I play golf, it is a great day. It is a wonderful day, but not every day can I play golf and work out? Those are two very time consuming activities. So I try to do at least one every single day. And that is an or. If I try to work out and run or play golf or play golf, then it is a decent day. I would say it is a decent day. So it can still be a great day. But if I can do either one of them, it is a decent day. And that is the difference. An ampersand is just a representative of an and in the English language. And the double pipe is a representation of an or. And that is really it. So let's go back over to this code that I had before. And let me explain it a little bit better. So in the example, I am going to declare whether I ran or golfed that day as a Boolean. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have an if else that's going to check. And as you can see, if running is equal to true and golf is equal to true, it is a great day. But if running or golf, either one of them, and let's just say I didn't, uh, actually, I usually always run. I'm going to go with golf because I can't always get out and play golf every single day. So golf is more likely than false but if i did run that day today was a decent day but if i didn't do either of them that's kind of a bad that's like a ding that's almost like man i did nothing and if i didn't do anything if both of them are false what's going to happen is you guessed it it's going to trigger the else and it's going to say i did nothing which is bad but let's go ahead let's hop inside vs code because if we don't practice it's probably not going to stick so the first thing that we're going to do is, as usual, we're going to create the easiest if statement that we possibly can. And that easiest if statement is going to be an if statement that always evaluates to true. And it's always going to evaluate to true because there's always a true in it. So console.writeline, and in theory, I guess literally 100% of the time, this code will always run literally always run there's never a time when this code will not run because it's always going to evaluate true because we hard coded true directly into the if else statement and we can even run it and we can see that it will indeed always run but watch what happens when i put a false inside of it you will see that this code is quote unquote unreachable and the reason that it's unreachable is because it will never run if there is a false hard coded into the if statement it's not going to run it is sort of a silly example but it is useful when it comes to learning so this example is kind of silly we'll go ahead and get rid of this and we'll model a more real life example and we'll go back to the example of the aquarium fish so i'm in the process of buying a saltwater aquarium and I want a puffer fish, but I also recognize that puffer fish are kind of rare. They don't always have them. So I will settle for a clown fish if they don't have the puffer fish in stock. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say aquarium store inventory, aquarium store inventory. And if the aquarium store inventory includes puffer fish, I'll buy the puffer fish. But if it does not include the puffer fish, I'll buy a clown fish. And if it doesn't have the clown fish, I'm not gonna buy anything because I want a puffer fish or a clown fish. How do we actually model this? Well, first we'll check if aquarium store inventory. So if aquarium store inventory is equal to puffer fish, I will go ahead down here and I will console log. I'm going to buy the puffer fish. So I'll say console, console line console.writeline, I will buy puffer fish. 
But if the aquarium store doesn't have the puffer fish, I also will settle for a clownfish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna say else if, and we're going to tack on an extra piece of logic that's going to say if the aquarium store, so if the aquarium store inventory is equal to clownfish, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to say console dot right line and it will say I will buy the clownfish and that will that denotes that I will buy the clownfish if they have it but if they don't have either one of them I'm not going to buy anything because I really want the clownfish or the puffer fish so if there's neither if there is no clownfish or puffer fish what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here I'm going to say console dot Ryan dot right line I'm going to say I will not buy anything and I'll go ahead exclamation mark that okay so watch what happens when I go into here and we if the aquarium store inventory is equal to puffer fish I will buy puffer fish now let's go down here and let's just change it and we'll say clownfish so if there's a clownfish it's going to say I'll buy the clownfish and if there's neither if there's a blue tang if the only thing that they have is a blue tang and I go ahead and I run it watch what happens I will not buy anything and that's the whole entire idea but we could refactor this and we could make this a little bit more condensed, but how exactly would we do that? What we can do is we can go ahead up here and we can use our logical operator. So I will take either one and what we'll do is we'll go ahead into here. I'll put a double pipe symbol and we will use the or to check if the aquarium store inventory is equal to the puffer fish or the clownfish. So I'm gonna go into here. I'm gonna say aquarium store inventory is equal to clownfish since we're already checking the or we can go ahead and we can get rid of this right here and we can say i will buy the puffer fish or the clownfish and that's how we can check to see if it's either the puffer fish or the clownfish so that we don't have to have that extra if there if so we don't have to have that extra else if there but before we get done here, let's just go through the other operators very quickly. And one of the most common is going to be the alligator symbol. So if I am going to go buy a fish tank, so let's just say fish tank price, I'm very price conscious. I don't want the fish tank to be over a thousand dollars. How would I check for that? What I would do is I would declare an if statement and say fish tank price. And what I'm going to do is say if the fish tank price is less than or equal to 1000 so if it is equal to a thousand dollars what i'm going to do is i'll say console dot right line um buy tank but if it is not so if i go into here i'm gonna get rid of that semicolon put it over here but if it is not what i'm going to do is say walk away i do not want to buy it so if i go into here i say don't buy and what i'll do is go ahead in here I'll say, if, so if the price is $999, let's go ahead and see. So if the price is $999, we'll go ahead and buy the tank. Pretty simple. So the last and the final way, this way is actually gaining a lot of popularity and becoming way more popular is to check by type. What exactly do I mean by that? So if I'm going to go into here. I'm going to say aquarium fish just for the old example. And I'm going to say uh, puffer fish. And what I want to do is check his, if this is a string or not. So if this is a number or if this is a string, I want to check that. How would I do that in an if statement? Well, what you do is you go into here, you say aquarium fish or whatever variable that you have, you say is, and you, what you can do is you can place a string. So if the aquarium fish is a string, which it is a string. So if I change this to a string, it is indeed a string. But you'd also change this to an int if it's an int. And all that's going to do is if it is a string, it is going to execute the code. And this is actually very powerful and not something that we used to have back in the day. You used to not actually see this. It wasn't that common. And we'll say aquarium fish is a string. So we'll say aquarium, aquarium fish is a string. Aquarium fish is a string. And then go ahead, close off. Uh, add a semicolon and watch what happens. So if the aquarium fish is a string, you will see aquarium fish is a string logged to the console. Anyways, that's the end of the video. Hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.